we were thinking about what we might do for our Christmas season podcast and running out of ideas as usual when suddenly, <laughs> suddenly we got a terrific gift. We heard from a listener who said, you know, there is a wonderful blog written by a lady named Ann Robertson you really should check out. She's a great storyteller, a great writer, so uh, always eager to do something other than what we were supposed to be doing. <laughs> we checked it out on the web. Her writing, indeed, is wonderful. So we called up Ann Robertson and asked her if she would be kind enough to take one of her stories and just read it to us. So, Anne, welcome, and would you be willing to do that for us? Absolutely. You're so kind. We call it Noel, Noel. Dot began demanding her dessert even before the salad was served. Eleanor talked loudly to no one in particular about subjects known only to her. Russell sat quietly, looking down at his plate, missing his wife, across from Francis, who missed her, too. I want dessert, said Dot. Carl was with his wife at another table, and she was reminding him that he couldn't do anything right. You're a mess, Carl. Pick up your fork. You eat with a fork. His hearing aid was off. It was a typical lunch at the Birches, the home for the memory impaired in Concord, New Hampshire. I was there for my weekly visit with my mother, who'd been living there just over a month. It seemed so much longer. The staff bustled about. Fish or chicken? I want dessert, said Dot. Would you like a salad, Joan? I'm dreaming of a white Christmas melted through the room from a set of speakers, but no one took much notice. You don't like me, do you, said Eleanor, loudly, to no one in particular. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer played next but even his brilliant red nose couldn't cut through the fog at every table. I want my dessert, said Dot. And then it happened. The first Noel, the angel did say, was to certain poor shepherds in fields as they lay. And the room grew quiet. In fields where they lay keeping their sheep, someone began to hum with the music. On a cold winter's night that was so deep, others joined in. Noel, Noel, Eleanor sang out the chorus. Mother joined in. Noel, Noel. Russell looked up from his lap. Carl's wife stopped her scolding. Soon they were all singing, even Dot. Born is the king of Israel. It rang out loudly across the birches the Birch's Luncheon Chorus. For a brief moment, something had brought them together in the same place, the same time, the same song, and cleared the fog. It felt as if God had come to lunch. And for a moment, we felt Christmas. It was enough to make you forget dessert. Thank you so much, Anne. Moment of grace. Where do those moments come from? Well, of course, as a pastor, I would say they come from God. They're a gift, uh, which is really what grace means. Mm. It's a gift that comes out of nowhere. You know, I would say it didn't come out of nowhere, but music is one of the last things that people still connect with when they connect with nothing else. And reaching back into all of the times that a carol has been heard and played especially many of the people of my mother's generation, uh, did go to church and were part of that. My mother, she Mm -hmm. loved loved to study English literature, and there were days when I realized that I could connect with her toward the end of her life and somehow share a memory with her, be in the same time and place with her by reading her some poetry. And I'd read her uh, Keats. She loved Keats, or Shakespeare, of course. She she adored. And, And in a sense, that was kind of like Noel, Noel for her. Yes. It reaches back to something in the person's soul, even when other things can't get through the thing that they have loved most. You know, that's maybe where the where the connection comes in. Mm-hmm. It gets into the heart. Then there's a response from the heart. And that has a way of creating community, even when you open your mouth to speak and it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. It is very difficult it, looking at her and saying... I really don't have my mother anymore. Have there been moments that 
you are grateful for? I get to give back to her what she gave to me as a child. Mm. You know, she once took care of me and changed my diapers and fed me, and now there are times when I need to do those same things for her. And and when that's happened, I felt like that's a gift because I'm I'm getting to return the love that she gave to me. And there's the gift of being able to connect. We can't connect rationally anymore. Her sentences literally don't make any sense. Mm-hmm. So you can't have a, a conversation even within a sentence. But there are times when I sit with her before I leave, and I'll take her hands and we'll pray and I'll look at her and tell her that I love her. And I can see her in there past all of the fog. Thank you so much, Anne. I really appreciate uh, the gift of hearing about you and the even greater gift of hearing from you. I hope you have a wonderful holiday season. Well, thank you. I wish the same for you, too. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Before signing off completely, I just want to express our thanks, as always, to Ipswich, Leader in File Transfer Software, for their shelter and support. Without them, we'd have very little hay in our our manger. And um, here at the end of the year, I also would like to express my deepest thanks to Gary Mott, without whom I would have no memory (laughs) and no right hand. And to our engineers, Antonio Oliart, Jane Pippick, Robin Moore, Alan Mattis, Jim Donahue, Ray Fallon, Mike Wilkins, without whom we would have no sound worth listening to. And uh, also to the three wise men known as Bob Lyons, (laughs) without whom we would have no morning stories. This is Tony Khan wishing you happy holidays and be back here for another podcast next Friday. Safe and sound. Bye-bye.